Welcome. In this video, I'm going to be taking a look at the Sane Logic Wi Fi weather station. So, this was provided to me by the distributor, but they're not compensating me for this video and they're not reviewing it before I post it. If you find this video helpful and you want to purchase one of these, I'll put a link to it in the description on Amazon. And if you use that link, it helps me out a little bit and doesn't cost you anything extra. So, there's some things listed on the front, but let's go right to the side because it has a more robust list. This is at a weird angle, but I'll read through it. We have indoor temperature and humidity, wireless outside temperature and humidity, air pressure, dew point, wind chill, wind speed, wind direction weather forecast, moon phase, solar power, precipitation data, UV, light, time, time alarm, wall hanging or freestanding, Wi-Fi connection, download weather data at weather underground or weather cloud, screen size is 170 by 124 millimeters, power consumption, the receiver takes three AAA batteries, the transmitter takes three AA batteries, power supply is 5.9 volts, battery life is at least 12 months for the transmitter. So the receiver can be plugged in or work off batteries. And we have specs on the other side. So I'll kind of scroll up here so you can read through these. You can pause if you want to read more detail. So that tells you the ranges of everything. So let's get this open. Okay, so here we have a user manual. Here's the app Wi-Fi setup guide. These are the quick setup instructions. So it says install the batteries in the outdoor sensor array first. It takes three AA batteries. Then connect up the indoor console. And it says don't touch anything until the data is received. Then you want to install it outside with a solar panel facing to the south if you're in the northern hemisphere and vice versa in the southern hemisphere. And there's some tips on setting that up. And here we have the app guide. So I'm going to walk through all that. So let's get this unboxed. So here's the display console. It's a warranty card. Over here we have mounting hardware. This would be the power adapter. So you can plug the display console in with the power adapter, but I would also recommend using batteries. That way if the power goes out, it saves your settings and you can still use it. So as it said on the side of the box, this is 5.9 volts at 0.5 amps. Here's some of the mounting hardware. Here's the transmitter unit, mounting bar. Let's get this off my bench here. Okay, so this is the transmitter. So this has a wind sensor. It has a level on top to help you get it level when you mount it. It has the UV and light sensor. This is the rain gauge. So so if I turn this counterclockwise, we can pop that out. And you can see in here there's a teeter-totter style pivot there. So when that fills up with water, that will move back and forth and that will gauge the amount of rain that's falling. So you don't have to empty this. This will drain out the bottom. A solar panel for power, wind direction, temperature and humidity. Here's that reset button. And this is where the batteries go. So the batteries will work when it's nighttime or when there's not enough sun to power it. Otherwise it has the solar. So I'll put some batteries in here. I have three AA. So now the sensor LED should flash every 16 seconds. So let's watch for that. Okay, I saw a flash. I turned the lights off to make it easier to see that and it wasn't super bright. So if you're in a bright area and you don't see the light, make sure you go into a dark area because it might be lit. So now I'm going to plug the display console in. So let's take a quick look at the display console. On the back here, we have a place to put batteries, the three AAA batteries. We have keyhole slots here so you could hang it. It also has a kickstand. So we can set it up like so, and I'll plug the power in here on the side. It just beeped. I'll turn my light off here, it'll make it a little easier to see. So now this is going to connect up to this. Looks like it just did it. Okay, so I just spun the wind meter and we saw that went up, so that is good. So now I'll flip this over and I'll throw some batteries in there real quick. So this has buttons on the side, has min, max, minus, alarm, set mode, channel plus, and snooze. So I'll pull off the protective coating now. Now this is drawing 1.6 watts, so it's very low powered. Move that to the side. So to mount this transmitter, we'll take this bar and we'll stick it in here like so until this hole lines up. It's kind of hard to see here, but there's a hole there. I'll take some mounting hardware. We have two smaller machine screws with nuts. So I'll take the nut off there. Let's turn this over. If we look on this side, we can see a little indent for the nut. So I'll put the screw through the other side. Now I'm having trouble pushing it through, so I'll just use a screwdriver to screw it through. Okay, so the screw's through. I'll put the nut on there. Okay, I got that lined up. So as I tighten this down, I want to make sure that nut is in line with the indentation on the plastic. Okay, there we go. Now we have the base. So this has two places you can put this. You can put it in here or here. So depending on how you want to mount it. And there's two ways to mount this. This has this bottom area and you can clamp it on a bar or pipe or a railing and you can clamp it in the horizontal or vertical position. So for that, you would use these machine screws. You can also just screw this to something. So you could screw it to like a post. And for that, you would use these screws like so. So I'm probably going to mount this to a rail. So I'll put it on like this. And same thing here. We have an indentation for the nut. Okay, that's ready to go. So I'm going to go mount this outside and I'm not going to go over mounting it, but it's pretty straightforward. I'll put this on here and I'll tighten these. 
and you want to tighten them evenly. So when you put this on here, you want to make sure it's not too far to one side or the other. You want it real even clamping. So I'm not going to show the process of installing it, but I'll show it after it's installed and how I did it. Okay, here's how I have the outdoor weather station mounted. And I was going to mount it on a horizontal post, but I decided to mount it on the shepherd's hook. Now this is a pretty beefy shepherd's hook. It's not a real thin flimsy one, although it might move back and forth a little bit. So you can see how I have it mounted here. It's pretty level. I don't know that it's perfect, but it's as good as I could get it. So I have this facing south so the sun will hit the solar panel there and charge it. Okay, now we're ready to connect this up to the internet. So you can see the Wi-Fi is flashing here. So this is in wireless access point mode. If your Wi-Fi is not flashing, you can hold down the min max minus button for three seconds and it will put it in that mode. So now we'll head over to my tablet to set it up. So before you set anything up on the weather station, you'll need to set up an account at Weather Underground. So I've already done that. And then you'll need to add your device. So if you go to my profile, my devices, this will list out your devices. So what we want is the ID and the key. So I've already added this here, but I'll just click through and show you how you do that. You'll hit add new device. You'll enter in personal weather station. Now you won't see the same logic on here. Just go down to other, hit next, enter in your address. I'll just do manual here. So this is your location where it will show up. Hit next, give it a name. It should automatically fill in your elevation, but if it doesn't, you can enter that in. We have surface type. Mine is on grass. How many feet above the ground? You know, like four or 10 or whatever. And then say accept here and then hit next. I think that will add it, yes. So registration is complete, and here we got a station ID and a station key. So you'll need to copy those credentials down. So now that we've done that, we can configure Wi-Fi on the same logic display console. So since I have the access point active on the console, I want to go into my Wi-Fi settings on my device. We'll look for the same logic access point. I'll activate it. We'll go to a web browser, we'll open up a tab, and we'll go to the address 192.168.5.1. And here we have the same logic weather settings. So on this page, under Wi-Fi network setup, you'll enter in your SSID and password for your Wi-Fi. Now this is only compatible with 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi. And then you'll hit save on the page. And once it's connected, you'll see it says status connected, and it will give your IP address. So I've already done that, as you can see here. And then below, we have the weather server setup. So here you enter in your weather underground ID and key, and you can also set this up on weather cloud. So you'll want to take note of the IP address there. That is the IP address of the weather station on your network. Now that could potentially change in the future, but on many systems that will just stay the same for a long time. So if you ever need to go back in here and change the weather underground ID and key, you can use that IP address to get there, or you can turn on the Wi-Fi access point mode. Now it says fail to connect to router here. It probably switched me back to my other network. So I'll switch over to it. Okay, now I'm switched over to my regular access point and I've entered in that IP address and I'm back on this configuration page. So I'm going to enter in my weather underground information here and then we'll go back to weather underground. Okay, so I've put that data in weather underground. So while I'm waiting for that to update, I can go to the app store and I'll download the same logic app. I'll open that up. So here you'll see the WU dashboard. Now if we go into the upper right here, we can hit add new devices. So this talks about going into Weather Underground and registering, which we just did. If we hit next, this talks about turning it into Wi-Fi access point mode. If we go to the next page, it talks about connecting to the same logic Wi-Fi access point. So I got past this, and this essentially takes you to that setup page with the access point and setting it up on Weather Underground and Weather Cloud. So I had a little trouble using this in the app, but it worked just fine in the browser, and it looks pretty much the same. There's no greater functionality doing it within the app. So that's why I just did it in a browser. But if we go back up to this menu, we can go to the WU device list. We can hit add here and we can add in our weather underground device ID and we can put our station name in, whatever we want to call it, and hit save. And that will put our data in the app here. So here we can see all of the stats that we're seeing on the weather station itself. And then we can go to history and this will show us weather history. Now I just connected this up so it won't have anything for a while. So let's go back to the web browser. And here I have the weather data being sent from the display console to weather underground. So you can see current conditions here, dew point, precipitation. Then if we scroll down to the bottom here, we can see history. So if you leave this plug in for a while, it will start gathering data and it will show up here and you can look at trends and things like that. And you'll be able to see graphs for all of this data. So this is really neat. There's so much stuff here. So just to clarify, the transmitter I put outside is sending data to the display console, and that's what you have in your house and where you read the temperature locally in your house. And that device in your house has Wi-Fi on it, and that's connecting up to the Weather Underground cloud to send data to it. So the device you have outside is not sending data directly to the internet. The display console is acting as an intermediary. So let's head back over to the display console. Okay, so I won't be able to go over every single thing with this display console. There's just too much to cover. This thing is incredibly robust. I'll say I turned the light off here for my recording because I was getting a lot of glare here. I don't see the glare with my eyes. It's just when I'm recording it, I get that glare. So this is more like what it looks like in person to me when I'm just looking at it. So I currently have this plugged in and that's my preferred way to run something like this, but it can be battery powered. And when you have it battery powered, the light will be off and you'll press the snooze button to turn it on here. 
and this will stay on for uh, so many seconds, maybe 15 or something, and then it will turn off. Okay, it's not even 15. So you can press that button to turn it on and read it, and then move on. But I like plugging it in. Now when we have it plugged in, we can press that snooze to change the light level. So there's three dim levels. Now if you want to turn it off, hold it down. And that will turn it off. So now we can press it. It will turn on for a few seconds. You can read it and it will turn off. So if you have this in your bedroom and you don't want this thing shooting a bunch of light out at night, you can turn it on the off mode and then you can just press it to turn it on. If you have this in an office or something and you're fine with it being on all the time, then you can leave the backlight on. So I'll hold down snooze and that will turn the backlight on. And you can see down here it says BL on. And I actually just want this on the brightest mode, so that is the brightest mode. So if we look at the display here, we have temperature, humidity, wind, dew point, feels like, and that's the wind direction. This is wind gust, wind average. We have rain, forecast, pressure, time, date. This automatically syncs with the time server. We have UV index and sunlight. We have moon phase. And actually the day I recorded this, there was an eclipse. There's a full moon. And we have our indoor temperature and humidity and our dew point. So that's just what we have right here. So we can hit this set mode which is in the middle here. And this will take us through the different modes. And then we can press the channel min minus and the channel plus to move around in those modes. So we'll hit set here. And if we look at the time, we see it flashing. So I can press this here and this will tell some different data. So we have day of the week. So we can see the seconds here. So if you want seconds displaying, you can switch that mode. We'll hit set again. And now we're going to rain. This is showing 24 hours. We have rate, total, month, week. So I find with the rain, 24 hours can get a little confusing at times because it might start raining one day and it might not stop raining for a couple days. And you might want to see how much it rained for those three days. Well, this will not show that to you. And I'm guessing there are very few weather stations that will show it to you. But the nice thing is this is uploading to the Weather Underground. So I can go on there and I can get that chart and see exactly how much rain we got over a period of time. So that's why I really like the web connectivity of this is that just because something's not showing on here, it is tracking it elsewhere. And you can really find that valuable information. So if you need more than what you're seeing on here, here. So that's really helpful. So it timed out of there. Let's get back to the next one. So here we have dew point and apparent temperature. Next we have wind average. So this is current. This is 10 minute, 2 minute. And then we have pressure. We have absolute and relative. Okay. So hitting that mode button, you can configure what mode you want to actually see. So you can also program a lot of things on here. I don't find they need to, but some people might. You hold down the middle button. That's your set button. And this will go into program mode. And there are many things on here. This is a time sync on 24 hour time format. You can change the hour, change the minutes, change the date format, change the month, day, year. You can clear min max. So you can have it clear every 24 hours. You can change your temperature units from Fahrenheit to Celsius. You can do wind speed. And there are many different units on that. Inches, we can do inches or millimeters. You can change your units on your barometric pressure. You can change your weather icon. We can change sunlight units. And we can set the direction of this. So this is pointed north. So we can also look at min max data. So if we press the min max button here. So if we look down here, it says max. And this will tell us our max temperature, humidity, things like that. Press it again, we'll have our minimums. So if you hold that down, you can clear it. So you can set alarm modes on this. Now you can set a time alarm, which everyone's familiar with, but you can set alarms on all sorts of things. You can set alarms on temperature, humidity, dew point, wind gust, rainfall, UV, and you can set high and low alarms on those. Let me give an example where you might use that. So you have some flowers outside that will be damaged by frost. You could set an alarm if the temperature reaches some threshold. So say the temperature gets down to 37 degrees Fahrenheit, you could have an alarm go off and then you'll know that you need to go out and cover your plants. Or maybe if you have a heavy rain, you need to go check your sump pump and make sure it's working. So you can set alarms for all of those things. And the manual tells you how to do that. So that's the same logic Wi-Fi weather station. If you're looking for a weather station that does it all, I think this is a great option. It has so much information on the screen here, and that's only a fraction of what you get out of this. Like I said, you can set all those alarms on here, and you can click through and look at the min, max, and history on here. When you connect this up to the internet, it opens up a whole new world of what you can gather with this. So I think this would be a great weather station for someone who's really into weather. It could also be good on people that have a vested interest in the weather like gardeners that you might want to know how much it rained. Maybe you're into certain sports when you want to know what the temperature trends are so you know if you can go on a morning run or biking or things like that. This is very powerful. Now this will live probably in your living room or your den or office or something like that but when this is connected up to the internet you connect it up to Weather Underground you can have a link to that on your device and you can see the current conditions at your house no matter where you're at. So that's all I'm going to cover in this video. If you have any questions please leave them in the comments. If you like this video please click like. If you haven't subscribed to my channel I'd appreciate if you could do that. And thanks for watching. Until next time goodbye. Bye.